Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Megan and fun fact, this is the last video I will film as a teenager, which is so sad. My name is Megan, I'm a second year, just finished second year at Durham. <laughs> My bed is not made, I'm sorry. I'm too short. Okay, um, my room's a mess, but let's... Should we ignore or should we sort it? Let's sort it. Today's video um, is the video that people want. Um, every time I put on Instagram, what videos do you want to see? People always want to see this video, and I've actually filmed it before. I've done it before, but um, I guess they want an updated or they've not looked for it. But anyway, so... Um, people always want the controversial tea on Durham University. Yeah, this is, video is going to be all about the controversial stuff that everybody loves to hear. So, I've not actually planned this. If I do a video like this, I usually plan it, but I have not. Uh, so let's just see where it goes. First of all, I'm going to talk about classism because everybody always wants a little bit of classism. So, for a more like in-depth look, you can look at my video last year. This is more like rich versus poor. I know people say like a classism, but class is like very perspective, like it's like your personal perspective on what you think class is. So it's more like the rich versus the poor type thing. It's just reeling off thoughts, like throwing ideas out there, seeing where we go. What I would say about classism is Durham is majority like uh, middle, upper class people. I think it's like 40% of students in Durham went to private school. So that's insane that doesn't include grammar schools and all sort of stuff like that so obviously there is a massive population of posh people um i'm not one of them i am um mega that is literally the fourth time in this video i've said what my name is why does anyone care they don't stop it and and i'm from north wales quite a rough town always been in state school and um, i got my offer to durham through a program specifically for people in bad state schools um so yeah i definitely don't fall into that in terms of classism i think the main ways it shows through is people just expect you to have money if you want to join a society you have to pay um for a lot of them i know loads of societies are so expensive and i just think everyone's students so how are people affording this it's so weird it baffles me so there's but in terms of other students i think there is often like a uh, expectation that you just have money to throw away there was a situation a few weeks ago and there was like a group of students they wanted to pay for a cleaner for our house um and that's just <laughs> why a cleaner why not clean you know um but anyway so and um, um, I got told like, oh, if you can put £70 into so-and-so's account by tomorrow. I was like, what? I've never even been to a laundrette. Like, I'm not going to pay for a cleaner in my house, okay? So, yeah, there is like sort of, not even like in a malicious way, but just like an unintentional ignorance where people don't realise that not everybody has the money they have. Sort of like they couldn't believe that i couldn't just pay 70 pound with 24 hours notice so like there is definitely sort of like an unintentional ignorance i guess because of the if you've been raised in a private school and like everyone around you's had tons of money then obviously um it's not something you'd think about that someone wouldn't but that's what baffles me sometimes is the lack of knowledge people have of people's financial situations or like people just don't seem to know the value of money like I, I bumped into a girl on a night out and she her parents gave her like five grand a month pocket money like what where? <laughs> that's like a full-time job a good full-time job where where is that money coming from so many people just have like this endless flow of cash and it's literally insane like I in terms of like well-being from a working class background to hold you back um i don't think so i wouldn't say obviously there are societies where you have to pay to join or um like players the nightclub is like eight pound to get in not worth it don't go um so obviously there are like things like that that are more expensive and you may not be able to experience them but at the same time you can experience like other clubs like you don't have to do the expensive stuff i'm not saying like um oh you have to miss out because you don't have money this is just what i do like i don't do anything really that expensive um like i don't 
join a society if you have to pay and that kind of thing i'm not like excluding you because i exclude myself that's the main thing i notice is other people not noticing like not personally like in my friendship group but just like there's certain things that the uni does and you're just like how can people afford that but i guess because the majority of the cohort has money then i guess it's not something that crosses their mind am i making any sense oh another thing that i find though with classism oh this is this grates me um people that say because like i said i went i got into durham through a program the sutton trust and um that was for people like who may not have had like a easy background or like didn't go to the best school etc um so i got in through that and uh, it irks me people say oh my god people from lower classes getting special offers just because they're lower class like they're taking my places away they're taking places away from clever people who've been in good schools just because blah 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 oh it irks me all i have to say is to this is if you've got a special offer from Sutton Trust or something like that. First of all, we did well to get the grades being in schools with overcrowded classrooms, um, limited resources. One of my GCSE classes, I swear there were 35 in the class. Like, if you're in a class of 12 people, of course you're gonna do a lot better, you know? Or like, if you're in an all-girls school, you've not got the distractions of boys because honestly, it freaks me out that people that go to an all-girls school have no idea what boys are like in a class. Like, it's it's really not the greatest learning environment so obviously um not only have you gone through all that but you've made it to the same spot these private schools that second of all people that got a normal offer all they have to do is apply through UCAS and they get their teachers to bubble up their predicted grades because we all know when going to university everybody tries to sweeten up their teachers to like boost up their predicted grade um so that's all they had to do they didn't have to prove anything if you got in through Sutton Trust um you first of all had to apply to Sutton Trust you then had to spend eight days in the summer working your butt off 7am to 11pm every day doing planned stuff whilst also trying to fit in a 2000 word essay in that one week and then they judged you on your actual ability rather than what your predicted grades were so um it's actually like we worked to get our offer rather than just and that's not saying people that just got offers like didn't deserve that offer obviously not because they're there now they're doing fine but i'm just saying people that belittle people that got special offers really irk me and i feel like that's such a upper class thing to do um in terms of like is there discrimination against lower classes i would say only the start the fact that like you have to pay certain things for certain like i swear the champagne society is like a hundred pound a week that's just rumors i've heard but that's what i've heard um so aside from stuff like that i've never known someone to like though i don't really socialize <laughs> but i've never seen someone be like oh you're lower class i'm not gonna be friends with you like i've never heard of anything like that like i feel like people do just accept people and that's a big thing in university i feel like a student cohort of our generation of our age are quite accepting in the majority though i do sometimes feel like everyone in Durham is posh and surely not everybody is posh so I don't know if people are changing like the way they act when they get there um because I'm like well proud that my town is rough I'm like walking around like yeah woohoo that's not me trying to say I'm hard that's me trying to say um like don't change because everyone else is posh you don't have to be posh like just uh stick to your roots and stay true to yourself thanks but I don't know I feel like there's too many posh people for it to be real. I don't know if people just come to Durham and pretend to be posh or maybe everyone is posh. The poshness you see in Durham is like unrivaled. It's a whole new level. I can think of the poshest person in secondary school and they'd probably be really common in Durham. Like as in the posh people would be up here, they'd be at the bottom. Like I, I, it's such a posh place. I swear for the first three formals I went to, I spent the entire time with the person sat next to me teaching me the correct way to drink a glass of wine. And I was like, I don't even like wine. Where's the vodka lemonade? And I've actually been to Pre's where people drink single malt whiskey for Pre's. 
there's definitely like people have been raised a bit differently or but like I don't think that holds you back friendship wise I think people can just be friends with whoever oh I do also think though that landlords take advantage because they know that most students have money and would rather pay a problem away that's one thing I've noticed this year that I didn't notice last year was people like students which is so unusual paying their problems away rather than fixing them like that was something I was involved in like this group were like oh yeah let's just all pay £70 each and this problem will go away and I was like can't we just fix it like that's and I think landlords know that students in Durham are more likely to pay the problem away than fight it which is not cool. Uh, to summarise, I don't think classism stands in the way socially. I just think there's certain parts of Durham where you think, oh, yeah, that's not really suitable for all. But that's normally society's charging that rather than um, like anything else. I don't think there's discrimination socially, like, oh, I won't be your friend because you're from Luton. Also, I, d I don't know if Luton's rough, that just came to me, but, like, I don't think there's anything like that. I don't know, though. I don't, I'm really cautious when I say this kind of stuff because I'm not a big socialite, so I don't really know, but I don't think. Moving on, should we talk about sexism? So, sexism, I think, may be a bit of a problem. I don't know. It's not like, I feel like it's a problem at a load of universities, like there was that big scandal in Warwick and things, so it definitely is something that exists. Not with anyone I've ever been associated with, N no one that I've been friends with or spoken to or lived with or anything, but I've heard some disgusting things um, said sexist thing said like um i was at a formal or a ball or something it was at a ball and the boys that i was sat next to like my group of friends were here and then there was another group here and i was like because there were five of us i was like the on the end so i was opposite someone from the other group and their group and it was four boys and one girl and oh my god the comments them boys were making i literally felt sick but yeah like i've heard disgusting things be said by boys and i feel like if you've been to a really posh all boys school because that's a very old-fashioned sort of upbringing so i do think like the idea um of women is probably still quite old-fashioned but i can't really think of anything to note but yeah i do think that's probably why sexism is a big deal in universities because there's so many people from like really posh all boys schools and i'm not i know people from all boys schools that aren't sexist but i'm just saying i feel like that's probably a factor that's what i'd gather anyway obviously that kind of upbringing isn't a, isn't an excuse at all that's not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is um the sexism in Durham probably isn't any different to any other university I think it's quite a big problem in all universities and um that's probably a contributing factor and then what else oh I kept seeing there was like this war on Durfest which is like the anonymous confessions that was like girls are only into looks I'm a boy and I can't get a girl because they don't care about personality and that is so false like obviously there's girls and boys out there that only care about looks but the majority if they're looking for a relationship are looking for personality so I think girls in Durham have had a really bad rep um, from that kind of thing. I think people just get a bit butt hurt. If someone doesn't want a relationship with them, they're like, oh, they must be shallow. Not, oh, we don't match or we don't go that well together or she's not looking for something right now or he's not looking for something right now. If someone doesn't say yes to a relationship or something, I feel like there's a big thing that boys turn to that, oh, it's because she's shallow. Uh, no, maybe because it wasn't just working. Like, I, that annoys me. That obviously doesn't just apply to Durham. That's just me going on a rant, but um over lockdown there was like a big war on Durfess about that so that's why it ended up in this video in terms of like lecturers and if like male lecturers are sexist i would say no i actually think they're really like supportive of girls in the class um though i guess with a lecturer you don't really get that close contact but yeah i don't think there's any sexism from lecturers though i know that this wouldn't apply to all lecturers because um, obviously 
there's always a rogue but like in my experience there's not been any issues with um that kind of thing so the next two things i've included are homophobia and racism and i'm aware that these aren't really things like these prejudices aren't really things that i've experienced um so i know i'm not the most knowledgeable person in this kind of thing but i included it because i knew it would be something people would be interested in but if you have any information that you feel comfortable putting down below that you think could help people like if you're part of these communities and you think you have something a bit more helpful to say then do leave it down in the comments because i know i've not got the best thing to say but i've tried in terms of like homophobia and stuff i think because it's a student cohort and what i said earlier like it is we are a very accepting generation i think it's quite an accepting place for lgbt i think or lgbtq um but I, obviously i've not experienced so that's one thing i'm very mindful of when i'm talking about this kind of thing just because my experience or from what i've seen has been good or like not affected me i don't know i can't speak for everybody but there's lots of lgbtq plus societies and lots of uh feminist societies and things like that so in terms of all of them kind of things i feel like the base is there for good respect and acceptance and from what i've seen there's good respect and acceptance but at the same time just because i've never seen anything happen doesn't mean it doesn't happen and then in terms of racism like i said i did a whole video which included a lot about racism in durham the one thing i think is with the admissions is it like 10 10 black students in the entirety of durham I can't remember if it's 10 or 100, but out of 20,000 students, that's not best represented. I didn't go more into racism in this video because I had quite a well thought out uh, Black Lives Matter video with a lot about racism in Durham a few weeks ago. Um, so because I didn't plan out this video, I didn't want to say anything that like wasn't planned and respectful and things like that. So that's why it's not gone into that much in this video. So you can check out the other video um, where I talk about that. So yeah, that's all like the controversial stuff that people always tell me on Instagram they want to know about. So I guess that's that. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it answered the questions. I didn't do like individual questions that I'd got on the Instagram. It was a few weeks ago on my story. I didn't do like individual questions, but I tried to answer it so that each question was like included in the video so i hope you enjoyed if you did don't forget to like comment and subscribe fun fact tomorrow is my birthday and um i shall see you in the next video also disclaimer all opinions are my own i can only speak on my own experiences so if something is wrong say if you've experienced something um or maybe if you feel comfortable and you feel like people might want to know you can leave it in the comments or that kind of thing because um, I do realise I'm quite privileged, I'm white, I'm from like a comfortable financial situation um, and things like that so I can't really speak for everyone and I don't represent everybody. If you have anything you might want to share from your own experiences do let me know in the comments and that might help other people. Mm -hmm.